So hi, Mike Rob Hunter here and look what I've got here. It is a microscope, of course. It is called the Stellar One uh, by the company Swift. And in this video, I'd like to show it to you and I'd like to introduce it to you and do a little review. First of all, a short disclaimer. Um, this is not a sponsored video. Um, however, the company did make the microscope available to me to do this review video. Um, and uh, if you're interested in this microscope, I did put some Amazon affiliate links into the description where you can buy the microscope then. And this way you can, of course, also support uh, this uh, YouTube channel. Now, this is a uh, microscope that comes in two different versions, in two flavors, so to say, uh, depending on the size of your wallet and also on the intention that you have uh, with uh, your observation interests. Um, one version, and this is the version that I have over here, comes with so-called Infinity Optics. That's the more expensive version. And the cheaper version comes with standard achromatic um, objectives. And uh, this is uh, the one that you can use, for example, for routine microscopy use and also for educational use uh, with students, for example. The plan objectives uh, that this uh, Infinity version has gives you an, a sharp image all the way to the edge um, of the field of view. And this means that it's very suitable for photography work uh, because uh, the picture is going to be clear and in focus all the way to the edges. Now, if you just do visual work and if you're not so much interested in taking pictures, then of course the standard uh, objectives of the cheaper version, of course, are also going to work just fine. What I'm going to do now in this video is, is I'm going to uh, start unpacking the microscope. Uh, then I'm going to show you the different parts and I'm going to comment on those different parts a little bit in more detail. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to connect uh, a camera to the microscope. And I'm also going to tell you a few of the things, how this microscope is actually different from other, sim uh, from other models uh, of, this, of a similar price category. Um, I would say now let's get started uh, and uh, let's start unpacking the microscope. Well, the microscope uh, came packaged in two boxes and the first thing which was uh, visible was the instruction manual and it was a quite a decent one as a matter of fact. Uh, they supplied me with a German version, which is of course fine. Um, the box itself, make sure that it has the correct orientation. Top must be on top, otherwise all the parts are going to fall out. And this is how the microscope looks like. Everything has was also packaged individually um, to protect it from dust. And after I've taken it out, uh, I could also see that there was quite a bit of uh, yeah, heat shrink uh, plastic wrap around it uh, to make sure that the parts all stay together during transport. Yeah, that's the name of the microscope. It's called the Stellar One. And uh, here we now see the objectives and the version that they gave me was the Infinity version. Um, and uh, it's important that you understand that the Infinity version and the conventional DIN version, the DIN version, um, are not compatible with each other. So you cannot exchange uh, objectives. Yeah, this is now the stage. There's also a little bit of uh, paper here to protect it from scratches uh, and from dust. And this is what you get. Um, as I mentioned already, a fairly decent instruction manual here. Uh, this is the power supply cable. It is powered by USB. This here is the photo tube, which I'm going to connect uh, just now using a little hexagonal wrench tool, which is also supplied. Some dust uh, protective caps. Uh, this is uh, for the eyepieces. And they also supplied uh, a set of 25 times magnifying eyepieces, in addition to the 10 times that was already uh, connected, which were already connected. And this is a blue filter as well, and a dust cover. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to now connect the photo tube. So I'm going to remove now the protective dust cover here, and I'm just gonna plug in the photo tube and using the wrench, I just tighten it and that's it. Um, so it can be removed also quite easily for storage purposes if in case the microscope is a little bit too tall for your cupboard, then you can also remove the photo tube quite easily. Okay, four times, 10 times, 40 times and 100 times oil immersion objective um, yeah, are connected. So four objectives uh, and that's the standard configuration. Also the mechanical stage, of course, uh, nothing you know, unusual here. You notice uh, the scale, uh, which allows you for precise positioning um, of the slide. Yeah, otherwise, uh, yeah, pretty standard uh, 
nothing unusual here but this here is now getting interesting uh, look this here is the LED the LED uh, and uh, on the bottom of the microscope it can be popped out and uh, it can be connected even without soldering so that's quite something interesting here as well yeah that is the power supply now with a USB and here this is the power supply adapter which uh, can also be stored in, in the back of, of the microscope and then of course uh, it's a 5 volt power supply and then you just plug it in and then you, know, you can just use the microscope or you can use a power supply battery the battery is not included of course but uh, essentially all provisions have been made because you can also uh, pop in this the battery here on the back of the microscope as well here you can adjust uh, the eye distance of course uh, that's uh, of course and at the same time you can of course also move the, the trinocular head back and forth and on the left eyepiece you can adjust the diopters in case you have two unequal eyes um, and if you do not want to wear glasses you can adjust it yeah here seen again yeah, you can um, easily adjust the eye distance so uh, here uh, we can have a closer look um, at the diopter adjustment again um, everything rotates nicely and smoothly and uh, we now have a look at the bottom of the stage and this is the condenser diaphragm it's quite interesting because it's color coded uh, normally uh, they write down the numerical aperture but i think the color coding is is uh, more easily understandable you can put in the blue filter and this is the coarse and the fine focus knob and uh, when you turn the fine focus knob then you see that the coarse focus does not turn and uh, that's actually a good sign they're decoupled yeah um, there is also a tension ring um, that uh, can be used to adjust uh, the resistance um, of the focus knob yeah and now I'm tightening it and it makes it a little bit more difficult to turn so this tension ring allows you to adjust to comfortable um, yeah, turning force yeah this is uh, the head it can be uh, moved back and forth uh, it goes very smoothly um, that's a uh, quite a uh, well made i would say uh, i would say even better than in in many other microscopes of a comparable price and uh, yeah here again we have a closer look of and here there is a qr code and if you take a picture of this then it connects you to online and you can get some information about the microscope and its use there is also a grip yeah, so it can be carried as well the microscope um, so that's also quite a nice uh, convenient uh, yeah, feature so now let's uh, connect uh, a um, camera um, the camera can be it's an eyepiece camera that can be simply dropped in here at the top on the photo tube um, or uh, yeah and here you can also um, adjust uh, the distance a little bit to make sure that it's par focal it means that uh, it's in focus when you also look through the eyepiece and the camera should be in focus at the same time or uh, you can now detach uh, the op optics of the camera and then you have a C mount and you can also connect it directly um, to the microscope as well so that is also something that um, yeah I, I like the options that uh, are given to me we're now going to have a look at the mic uh, at some specimens under the microscope so i'm going to put a mosquito wing now under uh, on the stage and we're going to now have a closer look um, at this yeah and you can move it all the way to the top and uh, let's get started so what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to now connect uh, my DSLR camera uh, to this microscope. Uh, I've got here a DSLR adapter um, and uh, connecting is, is quite simple. All I have to do is I have to remove the protective cap here. It's a dust uh, protection and uh, then let's insert the microscope. Not the microscope, the camera of course. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. So this here is now the wing um, of a mosquito. Um, and uh, it's of course bright field here. Uh, what we've got you can see all of the nice details uh, you see that the slide is not uh, quite free of dust uh, so i should have taken a little bit more care in preparing the slide so all of the dots that you see that is actually on the microscope slide now it is slightly larger magnification is now before it was four times this is now using the 10 times and uh, all of the dirt in the background that you see is i checked uh, it's not because of the microscope but is essentially a little bit of dust uh, on the optical system of my camera adapter 
um, so I have to give it a little bit of a cleaning, uh, but I didn't uh, do that yet. So I inserted a dark field patch stop, uh, not supplied, but uh, can be easily made at home. And I looked at the water sample and we see a whole bunch of rotifers and, and other cili uh, and ciliates and, and, and other uh, water microorganisms. Yeah, and uh, back in bright field again, another rotifer. So you see that, uh, yeah, of course, uh, the microscope uh, works quite uh, works quite nicely. So it's uh, suitable, of course, uh, quite uh, much also for, not also for, but uh, primarily um, not only for routine microscopy, but of course also for amateur use. You know, these are some some algae, some yeah green algae that are found in a water sample, and uh, again those. Dots in the background that you see, unfortunately, that is dirt on my, uh, yeah, on my uh, adapter. Here, this is oblique illumination. So when you decenter the dark field patch stop a little bit, um, you will see that the cells will start to get a slightly three-dimensional uh, view. Look, um, almost a little bit like differential interference contrast (DIC). Um, so that's simply by swinging out the filter holder a little bit, and we're again here back in dark field. A little bit and uh, when I'm swinging out the filter holder you see that it will receive this um, yeah slightly three dimensional um, appearance I'm using now the 40 times uh, objective playing around a little bit also with the light intensity right now yeah it works quite nicely so now what are some of the things that are particularly like about this microscope well uh, first of all I like uh, the overall very good mechanical quality of the de device like I want to give you an example uh, when you turn the uh, head, the trinocular head here, it goes very smoothly um, and there is no scratching and the reason is, is that the screw over here that holds the uh, head, the microscopy head, the trinocular head in place, the screw itself uh, does not scratch the dovetail. There is actually a bearing system in here uh, that allows it to be turned here without actually uh, yeah, damaging the dovetail. So I, I like this um, a lot. I also like generally the overall uh, yeah, quality of the build quality of the microscope, the materials used. Most uh, parts of the microscope are in metal. Well, that is to be expected anyway. But even those parts that you normally do not expect, for example, the base right now, which I cannot show you quite easily um, on the very bottom. I've uh, actually seen, you've seen a picture before of where um, I accessed the LED. Even that part is made of metal because in most cases, microscopes, this, uh, most micro other microscopes, this part is, is plastic, but not here. And another thing that uh, I like is, is that the coarse and fine focus knobs are relatively large or at least larger than in other um, microscopes uh, that I've seen. And uh, while this is not a, yeah, I would say a huge advantage, um, I like it a lot because it's simply easier to focus a little bit and uh, there's a pretty good grip here. And uh, if the focus knobs have a larger diameter, this also allows you to control the focus a little bit more precisely. I know this is a little bit a question of taste, um, yeah, but it's still something that I would like to mention. A little bit unusual for a microscope um, of, uh, yeah, of this uh, size is, is uh, the fact that it actually is operated uh, with a USB power. Now this is something that I've not seen in other microscopes uh, before. Um, this allows it of course to be used um, also with battery and I think this is also one of the reasons why uh, I think the target group of this microscope is also an educational use where you might not have a power supply on every table and then the students can grab a microscope and then they can actually connect uh, yeah, a battery pack uh, to the microscope and then uh, use the microscope without actually needing a yeah high yeah, a regular power supply um, and uh, I think uh, this uh, is also an advantage by having a, a trinocular or binocular head uh, to be removed is uh, like this is that you have uh, two students sitting in front of the microscope and it's easily easily possible for them um, to share uh, the microscope so another thing that I would like uh, to mention is, um, of course, and it's uh, something that uh, I also like quite a bit is, is the fact that uh, this uh, a photo tube here um, can both accept uh, regular eyepiece cameras and also DSLR adapters just like I have here but by disconnecting the top part here uh, as I've shown you before you can also directly connect a C-mounted camera. Uh, I like this uh, because I've seen some microscopes that have a photo tube here but do not allow for the connection of a C-mounted camera simply the top part cannot be taken off. Um, this kind of int interesting thing. I'm going to show you again. It's uh, this part here at the top. Yeah, 
uh, that can be taken off. Um, and uh, then you can connect a C-mounted camera. Um, I think uh, you've seen it before. And of course, this uh, fold tube can also be adjusted in the length uh, by loosening the screw over here. It's also a feature that I kind of like very much. This is important again, uh, because you want to make sure that when the image is in focus, then also the image uh, through on the camera is in focus and adjusting the distance here allows uh, to adjust uh, for par focality, as it is called. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to stop here right now um, to leave your comments behind. Um, and uh, what I would like to mention at the end, of course, is, is uh, if you have any further questions, of course, you can, of course, always uh, uh, write them into the comments section. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.